Hey guys, John here with House of Littles, and today we are in the kitchen making soap. So I thought I'd bring you along and show you how I do it. I got a real easy recipe, only a only a few basic ingredients, and then of course there's the lye. So I'm gonna turn you around and show you how we do it. Let's get going. So before we get started, safety disclaimer: um, you are gonna need some things because you will be working with lye to keep you safe. You're gonna need some goggles. You're gonna need some good thick dishwashing um, gloves to keep you safe. You always need to have these when working with lye because lye by itself is not gonna hurt you, but as soon as you mix it with water, it becomes very, very dangerous. Uh, it also produces toxic fumes that you definitely don't wanna be breathing in and you definitely don't wanna be making this around children and animals. So, safety first disclosure, don't do this around kids or animals. I've got mine upstairs playing. I've got Caleb a couple rooms away um, working on something by himself. And I've got, I'm very well ventilated right now. My animals are outside um, and in the other room. So they cannot get in here to me. That is the most important thing. And then make sure you have a mask for yourself because these are carcinogenic fumes. Nobody wants to be dealing with that. So let's go over the supplies. Uh, I mentioned the gloves and the goggles. You need to have a candy thermometer. You need to have um, a spoon. Nothing can be metal. You can't use metal for any of this. You need a food grade scale. You need your essential oils. Today we're doing, can't see that, lavender. That's lavender. Um, this is from all my supplies that I had to order. My cocoa butter that I got and my essential oils are from Bulk Apothecary. I will leave a link from where I get my soap making supplies. I've got ground oatmeal that I just kind of, it's just regular oatmeal I pulverized in my magic bullet. And then you need to measure everything out ahead of time, all your ingredients, uh, because this moves pretty fast when you get going. So in here I have olive oil, um, I have cocoa butter, and I have coconut butter. And in here I have distilled water, and here's my lye. And then you also need your mold set up and ready to go. This is a five pound soap mold that my husband made for me back in my um, craft show days when I was selling quite a bit of it. And then you're gonna need saran wrap, a mixing blender or a immersion blender or stick blender, and an old towel. Um, so once you have that, oh, and your recipe. So this is the app I use on my phone for, um, for my recipes. It's from Brambleberry. This is a app you have to buy. I don't remember how much it was, but it wasn't much. And then you can go, they do have some, let's go to saved recipes. See, they do have some recipes in here, and I've deleted most of them, but they give you the recipes on how to do um, liquid soap, bar soap, and a few other things. Uh, but honestly, I mean, they're great recipes, but there's a lot of ingredients in those, and I like things simple. It's cheaper. It's quicker, and I, honestly, I think it makes a better bar. So, But we're going to go back, and we're going to go into our saved recipe. Oh, that was our saved recipes. All right, and this one is my recipe. It's the Easy Quick Bar Soap. And here are my ingredients. So when you are making a new recipe, all you do is put in the ingredients that you want, and it calculates how much lye and how much water you are going to need. And if you notice, it gives you to the fraction of an ounce. You can not fudge that at all. And it'll tell you what your yield will be. So they make it pretty simple. So we've got 20 ounces, this is my recipe for this soap, 20 ounces of coconut oil, 32 ounces of olive oil, and one ounce of cocoa butter. Um, it is the unrefined cocoa butter. And then when it says water, again, you really need to be using um, distilled water. Okay, so once you have everything, what you need to do is combine your oils. You need to weigh them individually, and then you need to melt them. So I used to do this the technically correct way of melting it slowly on the stove in a double boiler. I don't have time, so we're just going to use the microwave. The thing you want to be careful with the microwave is, you know, it heats things up a whole lot faster, and you'll get hot spots, and what happens if you overheat stuff is it'll break down your oils, and then you lose a lot of the nutrients and the benefits, and you're just not going to make as good a bar. So we're going to very slowly, in 30 second increments, just kind of melt all that in. This is mostly olive oil, remember. So I'm just going to keep doing this until, um, in little increments, until everything is melted in. You really need to keep 
Remember, you have to be down to the fraction of the ounce, so don't spill oil because then your recipe will be off. And then if you have too much lye, it won't set right. If you don't have enough, um, it won't set right either. So, so I'm going to do this, and then um, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I decided to take this outside just because my kids started coming in um, needing things and don't mind the barking. Sorry about that. I can't do much about it right now. But I've got my 7.64 ounces of lye and my 17.5 ounces of distilled water. And I'm going to pour the lye into the water. Got my glove. Got my goggles. I don't have my mask because I'm outside, but you really should. And you're just going to stir this. until it starts to turn white again, gently. You do kind of a little bit, you pour it in slowly. I don't know if you can see the fumes coming off of there. It kind of looks like a light steam. You can get better, ven better ventilation outside anyway. So you see it's starting to turn white again, or starting to turn clear again. It's not gonna be totally clear, but you just wanna make sure it's all dissolved and it's starting to go clear here. Yeah, I'll be right there. So this heats up to almost 200 degrees. So we're gonna go back inside and work on our oils. Okay, so my oils are almost ready. My lye is settling outside. That takes, the lye takes a lot longer to settle um, in temp, to come down in temp than the oils do. These cool relatively fast when you compare it to how fast the lye cools. And you wanna mix them when they're somewhere around 110 degrees. Um, you really want to stick around that 110 mark. It's very, very important that it's not too hot and it's not too cold. It's very important for the saponification process, you know, for everything to turn to soap. So that's the, probably the trickiest part about this. Like this is the perfect temperature, but I know that lye is still going to probably be hovering somewhere around 140 to 150 degrees right now. So I'm going to heat this up just a little bit more so that by the time that lye cools and this cools, they'll be within a five degree difference. Um, but first, we're going to set up a new activity for the kids before we bring the lye back in the house so we can do this safely. So we'll be back when we set all that up. Little side note about temperatures here. Temperatures are very important in soap making. Uh, you need to make sure that they're around 110 degrees. I think I mentioned um, that. I know I mentioned the 110 degree thing. Um, but I also mentioned that when you're mixing your lye water mix and your, um, your oils and butters, that they need to be the same temperature. If they're both at 140 degrees, you cannot mix them together. You will have a live volcano. Um, you need to make sure they're right around that 110 degree mark. I just want to make sure that I am super specific and clear on that mark uh, so that if you try this, that you, you don't end up hurting yourself or somebody else or your kitchen because cleaning up a live volcano is not fun. Don't ask how I know. So this is almost ready. This is sitting at about 135, 140 degrees right now. Um, it needs to cool. But this will cool pretty quick, and I think the lye is probably sitting around 120. So, like I said, this cools a whole lot faster than your lye does. So I'm going to go ahead and run outside and go get my lye water and bring that in. And by the time I come in, this should be ready to mix together, and we can make some soap. All right, so there's our lye water swirling around. It is sitting at about 120. So we're going to go ahead and mix. So we've got our lye water inside. Um, they're still sit, both sitting a little too hot. They're both sitting around 130 and 135 degrees. Um, having them about a five, some people say in between five and 10 degree difference is okay. I like to put it no more than a five degree difference. Um, that's just my own personal preference. And then I will pour the lye water into the oils, never the other way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on the exhaust fan so I'll save you from that noise just to give I, it doesn't smell or anything right now but it still puts off fumes so we're gonna go ahead and let that just kinda get sucked into the exhaust and while this is cooling a little more and we'll get back with you when we're ready to pour alright so we've got some good temperatures here and we are ready to mix 
It's always a good idea to mix it slowly. You see how cloudy that gets? I don't know if, how well you can see that. Now remember, every fraction of an ounce counts. So you really want to get it all in there. Okay. So now we've got that. I do not, side note here, I do not mix these supplies that I use, even my candy thermometer, with any food products. It's very important. So I just kind of slowly mix this in a little bit and then I'm gonna go to my submersion blender because if you sit here and do this by hand, you'll be here all day. You're trying to get a consistency um, that's like pudding and then you go ahead and put it, you add your additives and then you put it into your mold. Um, oh, another note, when you are adding your essential oils, you have to know what the flash point is of your essential oil. And what that is, is the point at which all of your scent, all your benefits to your essential oil will basically burn off. It's kind of like cooking with an alcohol. You can burn off the alcohol and you're still left with the flavor. Um, that can happen with an essential oil. You'll burn off all the good components that makes an essential oil an essential oil and all you're left with is carrier oil. So that is important to pay attention to. So, and, and all essential oils are different. Some have lower flash points, some have higher flash points. You just really need to be familiar with your products. And then different places have different quality. So I am going to get my stick blender. We're ready for that. So you can see the consistency of it now. It's pretty liquid. It's like a thick liquid. So we're going to go ahead. I'm doing this one-handed. Pray for me. I don't want to burn. Lye burns are no joke. All right, so when you put this in, put it in sideways, tap the air out, because you really don't want air bubbles in, and just do little spurts, and you see how it'll turn and mix pretty much right away. You don't want it to jump up. You really don't want it to jump up. So we do a little bit, and stir it around. We do a little bit more. Until it starts thickening up, you really just want to go slow with it. And this is the part where it goes fast. Once you are mixing things, you cannot walk away from this. Your batch will be ruined. Got some air in there. You want to stop and get that out. See the air bubbles? Not what you want. You're gonna have some air bubbles. But you don't really don't want to be full with air. Your bar's not gonna look very good. And then you can hold lie pockets in there too. That's not good. What a lie pocket is is pretty much if it just doesn't set up right and it's not um, mixed right or if it doesn't go through the saponification process right and then you'll have a pocket of lye. I've never had one but I've heard about them and then if you don't let it cure for the right amount of time then you can burn yourself when using the bar. We'll talk about curing times in a minute. See it's starting to get thicker Okay, so some people like it about like that and then they will mold it. I don't, I like it thicker. But this is what we call a light trace. When you pick this up and you can drizzle, and you see how the lines are starting to sit there? That's a light trace. That's a light to medium trace. So now is when you wanna very quickly You want to very quickly add your extra stuff that you're going to be putting in because you get into, hang on sister, yep. Yeah, we're going to go in just a minute. I just got to put this in the mold and then we're going to go. We're going to go to Menards. All right, so this is when 
because we got to get wood. And then we'll be home and you guys can play outside all day. <laughs> they don't want to go to Menards. All right, go ahead. What is that? If you need help, though, you're going to have to wait, okay? This is soap, buddy. No, what are you staring Oh, this is a stick blender. So if you put this, all these ingredients in beforehand, um, what you're going to have is ingredients that will not hold in the soap. They'll sink to the bottom. Um, and I don't even know how much oatmeal I used. Probably like two ounces or so. And I used one ounce of lavender. Now this process of soap making is called cold process soap making because it goes through the saponification process in the mold and it really, it sits in this mold and it cooks. Hang on, yeah, hang on a minute. And then you have to leave it for eight to 12 hours. I like 12. Unless you're doing a salt bar and then you need to really watch it because that's done in like six hours. And if you let it go for too long, then it's like a brick. But I like to do a super thick trace because cold process will give you a very smooth looking bar and I like rough looking bars. I like to have a lot of texture and coarseness to my bars. I just think they're prettier. I enjoy them more. Yep. No, you don't put grapes in there. <laughs> oh, because Evie had some grapes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the mold. You see that? That is a heavy trace right there. Just put that in there. Alright, I'll get you trace or grapes in just a minute. So we're going to go ahead and mold this and you just pour it in. What I normally, the process I normally use is something called hot process and that is done with a crock pot or in the oven. I always use a crock pot. Um, we'll do that another day because I had to get rid of that crock pot. It broke. So I'm going to get this in and then I'll show you how we wrap this up. So there we are, all molded up. Move this, get some light. There we are. There it is. All molded. I don't know if you can see. I don't know if you can see all the oatmeal and stuff in there. Evie, hands to yourself, please. So I will wait until this is a little bit thicker and then I will kind of course this up here so that it's nice and peaked at the top. What you want to do at this point. If you are done and you're not going to do anything else to it, you could also like kind of garnish the top with some culinary lavender, um, since I made a lavender soap. Um, but you want to take, when you're done, take your saran wrap, put it over the top of it, and then cover it with your towel around the top and on the sides because it needs to go through the different processes. <laughs> Don't. It needs to go through the different processes of saponification and that includes gelling. So it gets into the middle process of it is when the whole bar will turn into gel. And if it's not well insulated and goes through a nice slow gel phase, um, it just won't cure right. It, it can look weird. It's perfectly functional. It just doesn't look right. So, I mean, sometimes that happens and you can't really do much about it, but you just insulate well and then you're usually okay. So here's where it's going to sit undisturbed for the next 8 to 12 hours or so. Um, it really needs to not move around if you can help it because if you jostle it, you can separate it and then it's got to reset and it just takes a whole lot longer. Um, so this towel is doubled up and then I've got saran wrap under it so it can go through a nice long gel period and stay nice and hot so that it can, it's essentially what it's doing is, is like cooking through. So it, that's what it does when it goes through its saponification process. And that's what cold, that's the big difference between cold process and hot process. Um, with hot process, it does all the cooking in the crock pot or in the oven. So you don't have this process and the time it needs to sit down is basic, or the time it needs to set in the mold um, is shorter because you've gone through that process. It'll sit here and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done and how I cut it. So here is the finished soap. This is just, woo, bouncing around. This is just kind of the stuff, you just kind of peel that off. It's really not as um, hard as I'd want it to be, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut this because I need my stove for canning. So what I use, is sorry about the dog. Um, is Frank is a pampered chef cheese cutter. Um, it looks great. So because he's barking, I'm just gonna go ahead. 
I just slice it down and I'm gonna go ahead and cut that and then I'll show you what it looks, what it looks like. Now. So here is the finished product, all cut. You can see the little flecks of oatmeal in it. Now this you wanna sit with good air circulation um, in a temperature controlled environment where it doesn't get too humid um, for six weeks so that this can set up because this is still very soft. No, that is cheese, you can eat a piece. Um, you can use this right away, but it would not last long. So you wanna get a good hard cure. Um, the longer it cures, the better. So it, when you're ready, this is mainly olive oil. Um, so, one more second. Um, so this will be a nice hard bar and it'll last a pretty long time. So um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you guys wanna see more soap making videos, let me know in the comments. I've got lots of recipes and there's definitely more uh, ways to make this. So let me know if it's something you're interested in and we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.